I'm Steve, I'm the organiser of UK Gravity Enduro, and I am a yam yam, not a brummy. Uh, a lot of things to um, stop, um, made a couple of bad decisions with press releases, the way they were announced, because we were trying to find a house, which you now see in shambles around you, because we're <laughs> renovating it, we had a little lady on the way, that's now two and a half, and uh, yeah, there was a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that created anxiety pressure with myself. And, and I, I, we made some bad decisions. But now, it's time to come back. There's, it's, it's one of those things where sometimes you don't know what you've got till it's gone. And people have realised that maybe they did have something good with the UK Gravity Enduro. Um, what will be new is hopefully we'll get rider numbers up in youths and juniors, even higher than they were before in 2015. And one of our big aims is to get the rider numbers of women up. We, we noticed that 2014 we had great numbers of women. 2015... They drop right off. Uh, we're splitting the uh, the young guns, so it'll be 15 to 16 youth and 17 to 18 juniors. And so it's great to see all these young kids coming through, and now they're trying to aspire to people like Clements and you know Richie Rude and all those kind of people. So yeah, instead of looking towards the downhill divas, you know, they're looking to enduro guys now. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, the women's category, yeah, like I said earlier, uh, numbers were shot right down. I think they halved or even made. made it was, it was scary what happened to the women's category. Um, so we've been talking with a couple of women-specific uh, events. Fingers crossed. Um, we're going to have a women-specific event at the start of round one and see how it goes. And we're also splitting the women's category. So there'll be elite category and then there'll be women's under 30 and women's over 30. So we're going to try and make it a little bit more fun this year. Sorry, next year, 2018. So yeah, we're going to try and make it a little bit more fun. It's going to have a bit of grin factor. But it's still going to be hard. They're all going to be different. And they will all have the pluses and the negatives. And uh, one of the rounds, round two, Eastridge, some people will knock it. But I guarantee you, it will be the hardest 25k you will do. I'm not going to lie. There's still going to be a lot of climbing, a lot of descending. But there's also going to be a lot of fun. First round, we'll only have 300 riders. Plus, we want to make sure we've got all the systems back to how they used to be. So round two will be 300 as well. Round three, four and five will be 350. I'm just waiting for the preview. I've just got to check all the data that we can input by the rider is okay. And then it's going to go November the 18th and that will be one booking fee. And that will be at 9.30 in the morning as well. So you haven't got to get up at stupid o'clock. <laughs> the real struggles at the moment, as well as getting all those, is the bike industry to realise and you need, really need to sit up and take notice of this. If you pay, if you put your money behind a team, and you put a lot of money behind that team now, because elite riders aren't being paid peanuts, plus all the kit and the bikes, and you haven't got a national series to go and race them, you've wasted your money, and a lot of money. Working with NRW, which is Natural Resources Wales, which own, own all the Welsh forestry, and then Forest Commission Scotland, is great at times there are issues normally created by riders going off digging wild trails and creating issues where they cross footpaths and um, if you're going to dig wild trails stay away from crossing footpaths and things it, it down the line it creates issues for organizers and anybody else that wants to put other routes in we're always short of marshals we always need marshals um there's a lot of stuff in the press at the moment about court cases against organisers and other bits and pieces, and that, that's quite worrying. Uh, and to which we are, we will be ringing in martial training at the event. One of the bad, well, it wasn't a bad decision. It was just the way we announced it with the personal insurance in 2015. All we were thinking about is the rider safety and what. It, it, let's not pussyfoot around here. This is a dangerous sport. And if you hit a tree or something, you know, you're going to be off work. And if you're not employed and they're not going to pick up the tab, you know, you're going to lose a lot of money. So we, we're we not making insurance mandatory, but we are highly recommending it. Actually, I think we should pan out to the car I'm driving out there, which is a T-Red Red Astra van that's dropping to bits. Yeah. <laughs> And somebody asks, "Have all the tickets sold out?" So yeah, I'm just I'm just on the beach in Barbados having a tequila. Yeah, Hard Rock is a is a totally different type of event. 
It's uh, it's got a, a great USP. You can't ride there out of the event. So if you're caught there, being up north, they'll shoot you or bury you. You know, and it looks like a, a massive festival. Yeah, it look it looks like Glastonbury for mountain bikers. Then it's a bit like the Morvens Festival used to be. <laughs> this is a trick question. A few years ago. <laughs> Let me tell you about Enduro. It definitely ain't dead. It's alive, it's a kicking, and I think the Enduro will be dead when the bike industry said it's dead because that is what drives the industry sales. 150, 160 mil travel trail bike, either be 650 or 29. That's what drives the sales. That's what makes these companies tick. God, the future of mountain biking. Oh man, kids are just getting so fast. Um, it's there's a guy that we brought through the scholarship called lee johnson he's the one that springs to mind i think he was 16 when we met him he's um he's 19 or 21 now christ the man the kid is six foot three built like a greasy chip about that that thin and yeah christ it turns out so much power he's so skillful on a bike and people are just they the young kids are trying to emulate him now and be as quick as him and yeah you you mentioned tiny seagrave earlier and the whole thing is you, through YouTube and Facebook and all the rest of it, access to public Im uh, images and videos is so it's so easy now. And it just inspires the young ones to be like their heroes. Why don't people just relax a little bit? And you work nine to five or you go to school at whatever time it is now and you do all your homework. And you, you're, enjoy you're supposed to be enjoying yourself. Stop. Too many people take themselves so seriously. Jesus Christ. Draw a breath and have a giggle. Yeah. It. We get to parts of the country that people just never dream about. We were in a we were in a valley in North Wales today that if a local hadn't took us, we'd never have known about. And it was stunning. There was two waterfalls running down into it. It was a dead end valley. This sport takes us to so many fantastic places across the country. It's, cause it's, it's basically what you do with your mates on a weekend. You pedal to the top of a hill and you just, you just, you poodle up and you blast it down. You have a giggle with your mates. Get out and have a giggle.